Hello, everyone. All right. Just let me make sure that uh, everyone is able to. Okay. All right, there we have. Okay, so we have um, Abhishek saying hello and uh, many students have been waiting. Sorry for the little delay and uh, hello everyone. And uh, this is my first class with the INICT group. All those who have been, you know, waiting for the class, this is going to be picture-based class, okay? So, we are going to display some picture and uh, we are going to discuss the same. So, this is for, especially for INCT students who have got a lot of pictures to discuss, okay? So, that is picture-based. Most of the questions come from those uh, picture-based section itself. So, now you are welcome to an academy and uh, I teach anatomy subject and this subtopic is this picture based uh, you know uh, questions and uh, let me know how you feel and what are your comments on picture based learning because personally i feel picture based learning you know is more effective and it is more observing than any other kind of learning so there are various methods using mnemonics we can learn we, we can use um, Majors and uh, this is one of the type where we have images and uh, this stays in your mind for a longer time, I believe. Okay, just try this out and try to get maximum questions out of such, uh, you know, things. All right, so now here is my credentials. I'm Dr. Rohini and you have, you must have seen me in all my other uh, classes where uh, I have, uh, you know, taught on special classes, YouTube classes. And if you have been watched uh, watching those classes, then you must have uh, seen all my classes with the other topics like, uh, you know, um, CNS I have taught, a lot of CNS topics, a lot of head and neck topics actually, a lot of head and neck topics. All this has been uh, done. You can also go back and see all this. And also, please do attend all those special classes that I take because special classes, I make it even more special I include a lot of MCQs, okay? Whatever topic I take, I include a lot of MCQs. So it will be really fruitful whenever you have attended those MCQ-based classes, all right? So here, I'm Dr. Roini and I've done my MD from KMC Mangalore that is located in Karnataka. And I also have PhD from Savita University and that is at Chennai, Tamil Nadu. And you can also see medical transcription and MBA in hospital administration. That is from Georgia, USA. <clears throat> okay, so this is my credentials. All right. So let's move to the first one. Let's see what question we have. This is what I just mentioned to you. We are talking to the INSCT students in this particular one because they have a lot of picture-based questions. So here is the first one. You tell me what is this one? Scaphoid fracture. It, it says scaphoid fracture. How do you define the scaphoid fracture? So we also have Rishabh Gupta saying hello. Hi Rishabh, how are you? Okay. So now, yeah, scaphoid fracture. How do you define scaph scaphoid fracture? So it is also called the push fracture because the fall is on the outstretched hand. So here you can see there is this scaphoid bone which is um, you know palpable in the anatomical snuff box. So I'll just try to write here anatomical snuff box. Okay, where there is a tenderness. So that itself is an indication that there is a scaphoid fracture. Okay, the peculiarity of its blood supply is the primary reason for this prolonged healing. So the healing is very prolonged. Why? Because of the peculiarity in its blood supply and all the other fractures in the 
upper limb exactly require about uh, five to six weeks. This takes even more time. How much time does it take? It takes about uh, 12 weeks. If delayed, we even take six months. So that is the average time that it takes whenever there is a scaphoid fracture. Okay. So now here, other than that, what else can we think of? We can think of scaphoid fracture is a break. So I'll just write here, it is a break in the scaphoid bone. So scaphoid is very, you know, kind of uh, fragile because it has this peanut shape. This is the shape of the scaphoid bone and it can easily break at this junction that is called the neck. Okay. So generally it includes pain in the base of the thumb, which is very worst, you know, point in the hand. So here anatomical snuff box uh, generally becomes very tender and it becomes very swollen whenever there is a scaphoid fracture. So that is an indicator of uh, scaphoid fracture. So you can see that blood supply of uh, scaphoid fracture is also very peculiar. What happens in the blood supply of the, uh, the scaphoid fracture is it has got retrograde, okay, retrograde. And this usually, you know, there is usually non-union. That is the biggest headache, non-union. That is the biggest headache. So that can happen. So it can also lead to uh, wrist osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis. So that is also one of the things. Or it can also lead to um, incorrect alignment. So it is also called scaphoid, non-union, advanced collapse. Okay, so SNAC. So this can happen. SNAC can happen if the blood supply, you know, is not sufficient. And if there is fracture, then these are the consequences of such a blood supply. So what kind of blood supply does it have? It has retrograde blood supply. So here, one more thing that you need to remember is it may not be, you know, even seen in the case of, uh, it may not be seen in the case of x-rays at all. X-rays, it may not be visible at all. So only when you place your name in the, in the normal x-rays, it may not be uh, visible. Only when you place your wrist in a certain position for the x-rays. So it may help. It may help in certain positions only when your hand is placed in a certain position and then the x-ray is taken, only then it could be visible. So that can happen. So it x-rays may not pick up the fracture of the scaphoid bone. So that is one more thing to notice. All right. So other than that, what else we can discuss? So here is the fracture. See in this very, 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 very thin line, you can notice that there is a fracture. All right. Fracture at the Based part or the neck part of the scaphoid. So this is how the person would have fallen, Fouche fracture. Okay, so this is the scaphoid bone and that's how it looks. And anatomical snuff box is the point where, you know, thumb when the thumb is extended, you can see a tendon that just stands out. And there are two tendons on the other side. There is one tendon that just stands out. Okay, that is called extensor pollis is longest, the one when you stretch your thumb, it just stands out. So that depressed region is called anatomical snuff box. All right. Let's go to the next one and see what is this one. This is again, you can see that there is a, <clears throat> a fracture of the shaft of, so you can see the sh shaft of which shaft that is proximal third. You can see proximal third. One third you can see of the which bone. You can please note which bone. It is ulna. And also you can see the dislocation of proximal head of radius. So these two things you should be noticing. Then you can call the ACE as Montegia fracture. Okay. So you have type 1, type 2 type 3, type 4, all these different four types you can see, identify. You will be learning more of this in your uh, orthopedic. And you can also see that 
there is a uh, various other you know um points that you need to remember approximately 20 percent of the fractures are type 3 okay this is the most common one the most common one is type 3 okay so here which is the vessel that is involved or nerve that is involved that is posterior interosseous nerve in Montagia fracture, posterior interosseous nerve is what is usually damaged. It is a branch of radial nerve. So you have to remember and also uh, the, you know, the other things that you can uh, identify are most of these injuries are uropraxia and uh, they recover very, very slow. And after the anatomical reduction and of the radial head, only then you can say that how much of damage has been happened. So that is Montagia fracture. Okay, that is fracture of the shaft of the ulna. So that is what you can identify in this particular picture. All right, so let's see what else we can talk about Montagia. You can see that it is, um, there is always difference between Galesi fracture. I'll just write it here. There is difference between Galesi and Montagia. Okay, what is the difference between these two? Montagia, I just told you, it is the fracture of proximal one-third. Proximal one-third, okay? Of which bone? Alna. And what about, um, and you can see that there is also proximal, you know, radial, uh, radius disruption. And in this case, what is the problem? The radius shaft. is dislocated okay so this is the proximal one and in this case it is the distal one distal one and that is proximal one so this is called p r u j you can call this as p r u j so this one is called d r u j okay that is the difference next one coming to the uh Brachial plexus, you can see the brachial plexus is formed by C4. That is prefixed in case C4 is involved. C5, C6, C7, T8, T8 and T1. So this is what gives rise to all those roots that form the brachial plexus. Now, in this case, you see that damage to C5, C6 that forms the upper trunk can result in this condition called Herb's palsy. So, this is Herb's palsy where you can see the arm has redness because the axillary nerve 3 here that is involved. So, axillary nerve is involved exclusively. Because that is the reason you can see there is tender and redness and muscle atrophy you can see there is atrophy of the muscles and you can also see there is pronation and also pronation and adduction that those two things are the pronated arm and adducted arm those two things are the main key things that you have to notice in case of herbs palsy and look at the finger where it is pointing. It looks like he's asking for tips, right? It is called policeman's tip hand. Policeman's tip hand. Okay, so that is herbs palsy. And you can also notice that he has ptosis, smaller pupil. And these are the symptoms of Horner's syndrome. Horner's syndrome. Why the Horner syndrome symptoms are here? That is because of the involvement of the T1 root. So T1 root is involved. That is the region. That is the reason you have. He has Horner syndrome. All right. So this is the one. Right. So in this case, you can see if the brachial plexus, long thoracic nerve, long thoracic nerve is involved or paralyzed. This nerve supplies teratus anterior muscle. Okay, then it results in a condition called 
bringing of scapula so that is also very important one of the important uh, brachial plexus injuries so we, when we discuss brachial plexus injuries brachial plexus injuries is very important when it comes to the upper limb you have to know all the injuries caused in the brachial plexus so this is one of them the winging of scapula damage to long thoracic nerve which supplies the serratus anterior muscle okay so you have to remember these okay let's go to the next one okay let's go to the next one where you can see okay now here there when we talked about barton's uh, when we talked about uh, let's come to that montegia fracture when we talked about galizia fracture we want, i want to mention one more thing that is barton's fracture what is barton fracture how do you differentiate from the galizia fracture or montegia fracture this is a compression injury so remember that that is different this is a compression injury and uh, with the marginal shearing okay with the marginal shearing what of distal part of the radius so remember distal part of the radius it looks so much confusing with the colis fracture so but you have to remember it is compression injury okay that is barton's fracture and here also the fall is on the outstretched hand and also the wrist would be pronated at this time pronated wrist so keep this in mind which one is compression fracture compression injury so now coming to the mallet's finger what is mallet's finger so here all right this is the mallet's finger here there is a tear in the extensor tendon so this one actually it keeps the volar surface or it keeps the last know the distal portion of your finger it could be for any finger it could be for any finger it keeps the distal portion of the phalanx straight or extended so that is not happening here so there is a tear in that small tiny extensor and that is known as mallet finger i have one like this i went to catch a dog with its uh, collar and you see the finger there is this one is straight and i have this yell uh, the uh, left side one which has got this bump there so that is because of the extensor tendon not being able to keep the distal phalanx straight okay that is a good example i'm showing you the uh, you know ready specimen itself so that is mallet finger all right so remember it is tear in the extensor tendon so now let's discuss one more fracture here i was talking about uh, barton's fracture i talked about montegia fracture what is offer fracture what is other name for this the other name for this is called hutchinson fracture or you can also call this as backfire fracture so many names no here what happens the damage is to radius styloid process okay remember styloid process it may just fragment out the fragment of styloid process may just chop out and that is shaffer's fracture so that's the reason i said chop out okay remember shaffer's fracture is styloid process just getting chipped off so you remember chipped off okay so that is mallet fracture let's go to the next one what is galezi and uh, dorsal galezi and volar galezi so here you can see there is a fracture of the radius shaft there is a dislocation and you can also see there is a dislocation at the you no know, radius fracture of the radius you can see and there is also dislocation of the ulna okay so here also you can see the fracture of the radius volar side and dorsal side so there is this dorsal side there is dislocation here the dislocation is on the volar side all right so that is called dorsal galezi fracture 
this side it is called polar galaxy fracture okay let's go to the next one and see what it is and this is called the tennis elbow okay so tennis elbow is inflammation inflammation of what inflammation of the extensor tendons extensor tendons of forearm so forearm extensor tendons you can see there is the repetitive movement and because of that there is inflammation of the tendons and that could be partial tear of the tendon also and that you know connects the muscle to the bone so these fibers they begin on the outside of the elbow you know and the part and there are very high chances that they can get easily you know damaged and that is known as tennis elbow so versus golfer's elbow you must have heard of golfer's elbow also that is because of the flexor tendons flexor tendons of what flexor tendons of forearm okay that is because of the extensor tendons and this is because of the flexor tendons okay so that is tennis elbow and golfer's elbow so in this particular one you can see there is foot drop can you see there is a drop in the foot instead of dorsiflexion it's always plantar flexed. That's why you call it as foot drop. And here it is because of damage to common peroneal nerve. Common peroneal nerve has two branches. There is a deep peroneal and superficial peroneal. Superficial supplies the lateral compartment and the deep one supplies the anterior compartment. This is what is the extensors compartment. Okay, so since this deep peroneal nerve is damaged, you can see deep peroneal is now damaged. The anterior compartment, all these muscles, there are muscles like tibialis anterior. And then we have one for the thumb that is called extensor hallucis and for all these that is extensor digitorum and then we have for one peroneus muscle that is in front peroneus tertius so these are the muscles present in the anterior compartment so these muscles will lose the nerve supply and that's why the prime mover of this that is tibialis anterior will not work efficiently that results in foot drop that results in the foot drop okay so remember this so this is how you can help the patient by using the brace and keeping the foot lifted this is dorsiflexed so you will have to train the foot with this action and that is one thing all right now we were talking about the other time we were talking about brachial plexus injury remember brachial plexus i asked you about horner syndrome horner syndrome anybody knows what is horner syndrome and what are the symptoms that you can uh, you know remember with the horner syndrome so here you have uh, horner syndrome that involves the t1 root and you know that T1 is also involved in the clump case palsy. Remember, okay, clump case palsy. So here you have all these characteristics. So constricted pupil, constricted pupil, that is called the meiosis. So meiosis and then anhydrosis. Okay, this is anhydrosis. And also you can see the n ophthalmus. And above all, partial doses. Because of damage to Muller's or nerve damage to Muller's muscle. That is called superior tarsal muscle. Okay, so remember this. These are the 
think you can identify in Horner syndrome. So, okay. So, this is sometimes uh, you, I think you can just remember this as sample. S-A-M-P-L-E. 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 All right. Sample. So, remember this. Next one. What is Bennett's fracture? Remember the Bennett's fracture? I told you the Bennett fracture is nothing but the injury, compression injury. So injury is at the base of the first metatarsal. That is Bennett fracture. This is the compression injury. All right, so let's see. Coley's fracture here. This is the Smith fracture. So here you can see there is Coley's fracture, Smith fracture. And uh, okay, so let's go to the Smith fracture where you can see there is. Uh, you remember I. I'll tell you how to remember this. You remember I in this one. You remember O. So this is outstretched. Okay. This is outstretched hand. And this is called words colis. So there is this there is dorsal displacement and in this case there is polar displacement or angulation of distal fragment. Okay, so this is called reverse colis also. You remember inward, this is inward, palm is failing facing inwards, remember I, and this one is facing outward. So remember outward O, okay? This is I, that's why I said inward is I Smith. So this outward O for coles. So this is the normal coles fracture, or you can also see that this is a common, this is a more common coles. This one is reverse coles fracture, the opposite of this. So here it is volar displacement, and here it is dorsal displacement. And this is also called the inner fork deformity. Okay, so all right. So we have reached the last one where we have this uh, the last structure. What is the structure that you can see here in this one? In the neck, this side. And see there is a big mass. What, what does that indicate? It's on the side of the cheek and you can see that. Okay, it is unilateral. It's on the side and it is. it looks like adenoma. Adenoma of the Of the parotid gland. Adenoma of the parotid gland, you can identify. What are the features that you can list here? One is the pleomorphic adenomas. These are um, actually benign. One thing you can notice is it is benign salivary gland tumor. Okay. So here you can see that it predominantly affects the superior lobe or sorry the superficial lobe superficial so because the inner mass is just okay the superficial one is what is affected you can see this is affected so see the natural looking parotid would be lobulated lobulations you should be able to see this is natural but if the lobulations are not there there is a mass or thickened mass, then you call this as adenoma. So here you can see it is no more lobulated. So it looks more of 
clumped together. That's why we call this as adenoma of the parotid gland. And you can also see the structure. It is pleomorphic in nature. And that's why I said it involves the superficial lobe of parotid. So it, the pleomorphic nature can be explained. How do you explain the pleomorphic nature? You can explain because of the epithelial lump, you know, and uh, connective tissue, looking at the epithelial cells and the connective tissue structures. So usually it affects the females. Usually it affects the females between the age of 30 to 50 years of age. So it has got more affinity to female gender. Okay, so this is what you can see in the picture. All right, so this is one thing to note that is it is benign and another one is it is adenoma of the parotid gland and you must know that it affects more, mostly the females and it is the superficial lobe which is affected because the deeper lobe is again uh, is not involved much and you should remember the facial nerve if it was involved you would have already seen all those symptoms related to facial nerve injury okay facial nerve is not involved that is the reason his face looks fine in this otherwise you would have seen his face with all the mask face and drooping eyelid everything all the other symptoms would have been there okay so now here let's come to the other topics we have uh, plus subscriptions. You can choose from the best of the best and uh, you can access both live and recorded sessions here. And you can also compete in uh, tests and quizzes. And you can also get up to 12 month subscription. It will definitely give you the hard copy notes itself. Okay. So all this, whatever you saw that it's just a glimpse of what you can get when you go with the subscription. So you can get much, much more when you go with the subscription. Always, uh, you know, subscription will give you 100% curriculum coverage. All this will not give you 100%. This is just going to be a like a demo. Okay, when the demo can be this good, when you are impressed, you should make up your mind to go with the subscriptions. And when you go on to go with the subscription, you have to remember that you can also avail for discount and, uh, you know, 10% discount you can get. Ruini 10, this is the code, unlock code you can use and try our subscriptions. It is really, really good because you have access with the iconic subscription to both Prep Ladder and Nun Academy also. And here you can see some special class features that's going to be on Wednesdays. All my Wednesdays are dedicated to special class because I connect on Wednesdays with my three or four classes. It starts as early as 7.30 a.m. Okay. So with 7.30 a.m. you can see my classes running and we'll start with quiz and high energy, you know, classes. All these are very interactive and there are polls and uh, all these features are there. And you can also get PDF notes at the end of the class. So you have all these features in special classes and you'll not miss a class because you'll always get notification. Now you'll ask me how to get to the special class. It is by downloading the app called Unacademy Learners app. Okay, Learners app you can download. And once you download, you should be going straight away for the competitive courses where you can look at Neat PG. I teach Neat PG students. I teach anatomy. Go look up for my classes. You know my profile. You know how I look like. My photo will be there. My picture will be there. And I teach anatomy. So you see all the upcoming classes. And once you see my class, you can just use my code ROHINI10 and then you can unlock my class. Okay, you unlock it. And if the class is tomorrow, it will tell you that you are going to wait and you will be notified. Okay, so that itself is the end of your enrolling for the class. So hereafter, you will go on receiving the intimation for all other classes because you're already un, uh, enrolled with the lock code. So this is all free classes. Remember, all this is free. You can also go for the plus classes, the paid classes, subscription classes with the same code and not just need, um, you know, or uh, FMG or medical based uh, students others also can use the code if you have someone else who want to use the code and check an academy classes in other streams completely different streams please go ahead use the code 
it can be commerce or some other subjects also it doesn't matter the code will remain the same okay so now here there are about 25000 high yield clinical questions you can find and also the latest exam pattern you can see and also detailed explanations all this is present in your q bank and there is limited time offer there is only 38 to 50 charge okay this is for iconic subscription so you see you can get dual bonus that is for 12 month subscription it is about 45 otherwise and you can also see there are proud you know learners there are so many learners fmg you know, all these have scored more than 180 you can see all these have scored more than 180 and this is really a proud moment because so many students have scored and we have just showed only few students in this particular slide there are always parallel classes running and you can also see some uh, clinical examinations procedures badge and you can boost your medical preparation with uh, some 24 months you know, subscription and you also get four months free so like that you get four five months free so this free ones definitely is going to motivate you because you are going to get more months access so all this is limited time offer so you need to use the code here also remember the code is for both the paid ones as well as the free ones so here is your um, uh, emi option you can go with the emi and uh, you can definitely check out all those uh, no, R O H I N I is the code. Ten. Okay, with this code, you can definitely go for EMI option. Like forty-eight months is one four zero six only. Like that, you have for iconic, and if you go with the plus, it is forty-eight months one one two five. So here there is slight change in the price also, depending on what you are subscribing for. So see here, there is 36 months, 24, 18, 12, etc. And you also have six months subscription. So all this is definitely going to be worth it because six months subscription also has EMI. So everything is going to be, you know, kind of pocket friendly and also less stressful on your pockets. Okay. So with all these, I would like to thank all of you, those who have attended and uh, me, Dr. Roini like to say bye bye and see you at 7 30 7 30 a.m why is this so because you have a quiz so you want to attend my quiz at 7 30 a.m please do join me at 7 30 a.m and let's have a nice quiz and refresh start our day with the, you know good jump start jump start with quiz always it is very important that your mornings are started in a nicer way so start with quiz tomorrow at 7.30 a.m. See you all, you all.